On October 30th, ex-Toronto Argonaut player Peter Gabriel was attending a football game at the Rogers Centre. But an incident occurred at halftime when the ex-wide receiver was grabbed by a security guard. The reason he was accosted? Gabriel was wearing a Tiger Woods mask. And hey, it was the eve of Halloween after all, and Gabriel was just getting into the spirit of things. But when Gabriel refused to surrender his mask to the security guard, he was descended upon by four additional guards plus four Toronto police officers. The Argo alumnus is so furious, he's now considering pressing charges, assault charges. But why was Gabriel accosted in the first place? Well, Roger Centre has a no full face mask policy, and apparently this rule is strictly enforced, even around Halloween. Yet the question arises, is the no face mask rule enforced across the board? Or does political correctness take lease when it comes to certain types of face masks? That's why I recently attended the last Argonaut game ever to be played at Roger Center. I was joined by a female friend who was clad in the full face concealing niqab. We wanted to see if she could gain entry into the stadium, essentially in violation of the Roger Center policy. Here's what happened. Now, folks, as you just saw, to gain entry into the Roger Center, one must first go past a checkpoint that resembles what you'd find at an airport these days. But despite the presence of security guards and police officers, my friend just waltzed right past them. No muss, no fuss. Hey, where's that no face mask rule? Didn't they notice that her face was completely concealed? Or is there some unwritten exemption for face masks that are associated with a certain religion or culture. In any event, once we took our seats, I decided to further test the no face mask rule. I donned a balaclava midway through the first quarter and decided to visit the snack bar for some popcorn. Oh, well, guess what, folks? I never even made it out of the section before I was descended upon by a security guard, just like Mr. Gabriel was on October 30th. I was just trying to ascertain why I had to surrender my mask while my companion was allowed to keep hers on. And the answer ad nausea was that there is a religious cultural exemption that allows for the niqab. Well, I was soon frog marched up the ramp to the concourse, whereupon the security guard presented me to a police officer, and then I was further escorted to the customer service booth. What was fascinating is that nobody I was dealing with could see the double standard at play here, namely, that one type of face mask is fine, while another is strictly verboten. But regardless, it's still a disguise, right? It's still it's something not, covering your face. You don't claim there, you say it's a disguise, but it's not a disguise, though. That's the wrong choice of words. But sir, how, how would you that, define that, it? That's cultural, that's it, the religious. You call her religious, that's disguise. It's just not disguising herself in any way. That's mm. her way of life. I'm not Muslim, but you could go to Muslim scholars and they will tell you there's nothing in the Quran but mandating... Well, Quran. Well, no, but, no, but, but you brought it up. You said cultural no, and religious no, no, but reasons. You brought it up well, saying that she has it on. Yes. I will say one thing is that you know, this is an article game. Yes. It's not a political... It's not a political... <laughs> As a matter of fact, anybody, if we, if we be assigned people like this, Political statements, religious statements, anything not related to the game. Yeah. It is private property. It will ask you to take it off. Oh, I, I respect for the purposes of you want to make. Uh, I respect that, and I'll comply with your with your regulation. No, no problem. I'm ju I'm just saying I don't understand why there's a double standard. That that's it all. Not, it's not a double standard. Well, you haven't you are by as to why it's a double standard. Sometimes have to be made in law, perhaps in 
lawmakers have decided that in some situations somebody can triple the base and it, we decided to we fully decide to back to that portion of the law, but in every other situation we will keep with the policy of no disguise. Okay then. Is this where I get escorted to the exit or? Uh, <laughs> so you still want to keep your mask? Because yeah. you still want to keep I your do. mask, then we will all have Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Which way Sorry. do I go, sir? Uh, if you want to follow me, that's way. Okay. Have a good night. Okay. Bye bye. Uh, I gotta say, this is the first time I've been kicked out of the stadium. <laughs> have a good night. Have a good weekend. Okay. Yeah, Take care. Bye bye. So there you have it, folks. A de rigueur full face mask is under the ban at Rogers Centre, along with such things as alcohol, weapons, noisemakers, frisbees, laser pens, glass bottles, selfie sticks, squirt guns, beach balls, brooms, hard-sided coolers, fireworks. Whew, the list goes on and on. It sounds like a real fun place to see a sporting event, doesn't it? But get a load of this, folks. There's a section of the Rogers Centre security policy that focuses on, quote, offensive clothing. The stadium guidelines note that offenders wearing offensive clothing may be, quote, denied entry into or possibly ejected from the stadium. Well then, according to Roger Center own clothing policy, why is the niqab allowed into this stadium given this particular policy? For is not this a piece of haberdashery that is so offensive? Is not the niqab a disgusting symbol of the absolute suppression of female equality? And the niqab is also insulting to males, given that it implies that men are so lacking in civility and decency that they will sexually assault an unveiled woman, you know, like cats drawn to an open tin of cat food, as one progressive imam in Australia stated a while back. So what does Roger Center have to say about the face mask double standard? We reached out to Steph Porter, who takes care of public relations for the stadium. She said the following, quote, If we can't see a person's face, we can't let them in the building for security reasons, for lots of reasons, end quote. Okay, fair enough. We already know that, and we accept that. But again, we wanted to know why one mask passes the sniff test and another doesn't. Porter insisted I email my questions to her so she could consult with the Vice President of Security in order to give us answers in writing. But what we received back were non-answers. Essentially, Porter just provided us with the information one finds on the Roger Center website regarding face masks, stuff we already knew. She did not address why a niqab is allowed and a balaclava isn't. She did not say if there's an exemption for cultural or religious face masks. She did not say if security was correct in allowing the niqab into the building or if an error was made. And she did not provide an answer as to whether the niqab falls under the offensive clothing rule. In a follow-up email, I bluntly asked her if a niqab-clad person is allowed into the Roger Center. Radio silence, folks. Bottom line, either Roger Center didn't follow its own policy regarding face masks, or the stadium people are just too terrified to tackle anything that has to do with Islam. But they're not saying either way. So sadly, in Toronto, Canada, in the year 2015, a face-concealing symbol of Islamist suppression is openly welcomed at the Roger Center, whereas someone wearing a Halloween mask is basically treated as a criminal. What's wrong with this picture? For the Rebel Dot Media, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies.